Well, hello, small groups. Welcome to week number four of our Empty series. Happy to have you guys with us again. You are almost there. Just one more week to go after this to complete this series. Uh, but we're thrilled that you've been walking with us as we've talked about people who are empty and how they encountered Jesus Christ. Uh, my family actually has grown to three kids now. We just had a, a brand new baby boy, Jesse, and uh, my house is now bananas. It is crazy. There are toys everywhere. There are fights everywhere. It's out of control, uh, but we're loving it. And my kids are each just so different. And it, it's easy to see that when they get caught for doing something wrong. Because my daughter, Abby, who is about five years old, when she gets caught, she always comes clean. She says exactly what she did, and then she always adds the words, but it was an accident. So the other day I was in the house and I was watching the kids, and I heard upstairs my son Sam just screech. And it wasn't just like a little cry. It was like a scream cry because he was hurting. And so I ran upstairs as fast as I could, and my son Sam was, was crying, and he screams, Abby bit me! And I said, well, what happened? And so I, I, I looked at my daughter. I said, Abby, what did you do? And she said, oh, Daddy, well, this is what happened. We were playing with, the, with the, the, the toy little ladybug, and Sam took it away from me. So I grabbed his arm, and I bit it, but it was an accident. <laughs> and I said, now, now, wait a second. Now, you mean to say that you accidentally grabbed Sam's arm? that you accidentally fell face forward into his arm with your mouth and your teeth accidentally came down to bite him. And it was all an accident. And of course she said, yes. <laughs> and I said, come on, don't take me as dumb. I know that you bit the kid on purpose. And that's how she always reacts when she gets caught. She comes clean like right away, says exactly what she did. My son, Sam, he reacts in a whole different way. Sam will walk up to me and he'll put his head against my leg when he's caught and he'll say, Daddy, I love you. And my heart melts and I fall apart and uh, he still gets punished, but it's hard to discipline him when he's that way. And it's interesting that we all come clean in, in weird ways when we're caught for something. And in fact, our ways of dealing with getting caught, sometimes we feel guilty, sometimes we feel full of shame, sometimes we just don't want to go outside. And this last weekend, we learned about a woman who was caught in an adultery situation. And Jesus vouched for her and defended her amongst the religious leaders and those people who had wanted to just stone her basically on the spot. And in doing so, she moves from being empty to a life that's just full. She walks away and she takes seriously Jesus' words to sin no more. And as she goes from that place, I'm sure that her life was just radically transformed. And what we want you to do here at Sagebrush is we don't want your life to be empty. We don't want it to be full of guilt. We don't want it to be full of shame. But we want you to be able to move past those things into a life that is fully devoted to God. So how do you do that? How do you get free from some of those things like guilt and pain and shame and all the different things that we face when we get caught for doing something that's wrong? Uh, probably the best scripture that I can turn to is the scripture in Psalms chapter 51. And it's a psalm that David wrote after he got caught. And David, we know, was a man after God's own heart. However, he was far from perfect. And he gets caught in an adulterous affair with Bathsheba. And he's confronted by Nathan the prophet. And after he's confronted, he turns back to God and he writes just one of the most beautiful psalms that's, I believe, in the whole book. And he turns and he looks to God in Psalm 51 and he writes after Nathan the prophet confronts him. And he says this in verse 1. He basically comes clean and he recognizes that he's done something wrong. He says this, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Now listen to this, For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what's evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. And he goes on to say, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. David comes clean before God. He doesn't try to hide in his sins, but he says, God, this is who I am. 
I am broken. I am a sinner. I have done what's wrong. And because of that, David knows that his relationship with God has been severed, that it's been broken because of what he's done. And so he comes back to God to make things right. After he comes back to God, he asks for God to just cleanse him, to make him right. And he writes further, saying in verse 7, Cleanse me with hyssop, and I'll be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. David cries out to God and he says, God, cleanse me. Make me right. Make me clean again. I had a mom who loved to do laundry and she had this big, huge laundry room. And uh, this one day my mom was in the laundry room and I just heard her scream so loud and so I ran to the laundry room to see what had happened, and my mom had spilled like a whole big, huge bottle of bleach all over my brother John's just brand new jeans. And she pulled it up, and I remember seeing it. You could see the streaks of bleach that had run right through the denim, and it just had made it white. And she was so devastated. My brother John was even more devastated because now he had zebra-striped pants. And I remember seeing that and, and seeing the effect that the bleach had on that denim material. It had made it just clean and white. And that's the power that God has to take our lives that are dirty and broken and grimy, and he can cleanse us out. And David knew that God had that power. So he cries out to God, and he recognizes that he's done something wrong, and he asks, he asks God just to clean him out, make him right. Then he looks to God, and he asks God to use him again. He says, and he goes on in that passage to say, and closes out by saying, Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. And I love that because David turns back to God and he says, you know what? I know that I haven't done everything right. Clean me out, God, and now use me. Use me as a tool to reach out to other people and to care for other people. The reality is, is every single person in your small groups today have things that you've done wrong. And some of us are just hiding. And even to say that word hiding makes you think that there's, there's something that I'm really holding back from my small group that I, that I haven't really told them that, that, that I need to just come clean with. And I would encourage you that today would be a day where, where you get some help in your small group, that maybe you exercise a little honesty within your group. And you say, you know what, I really need some help with this area of my life. And so that's what I want you to do today, is take the next few moments as a small group to talk about maybe an area in your life where you felt like, you know what, you've just been locked up in guilt. Or maybe it was a place in your life back where you felt like you were locked up in guilt that you've, that you've moved past. And then talk about as a small group, how can you help each other in order to be filled? We don't want you to be empty here at Sagebrush. We want your life to be filled. And so go out and find freedom in being honest and open with one another. That's our prayer. Thanks so much, guys.